who came to power in 1933. His goal was to dismantle and destroy the Jewish community. This was an enterprise so fast that it required the resources of a computer. But in 1933, there was no computer. What there was was the IBM punch card system, which controlled and stored information based upon the holes that were punched in various rows and columns. Naturally, there was no off-the-shelf software as there is today. Each application was custom designed and the engineer had to personally configure it. Millions of people of all religions and nationalities and characteristics went through the concentration camp system. That's an extraordinary traffic management program that required an IBM system in every railroad direction and an IBM system in every concentration camp. Now, this is a typical prisoner card. There are little boxes where all the information is to be punched in. We compare this information to the code sheet for concentration camps. And here you see Auschwitz is one, Buchenwald two, Dachau is three. Now, what kinds of prisoners were they? They could be a Jehovah's Witness for two, a homosexual for three, communist for six, or a Jew would be eight. Now, what was their status? One was released, two was transferred, four was executed, five was suicide, and six. Code six, Sonderbehandlung, special treatment, meant the gas chamber, or sometimes a bullet. They would punch that number in, the material was tabulated, the machines were set, and of course, the punch cards by the millions had to be printed, and they were printed exclusively by IBM, and the profits were recovered just after the war. IBM would, of course, say that it had no control over its German subsidiary, but here on October 9th of 1941, a letter is being written directly to Thomas J. Watson with all sorts of detail about the activities of the uh, German subsidiary. None of these machines were uh, sold. They were all leased by IBM, and they had to be serviced on site once a month, even if that was at a concentration camp such as Dachau Buchenwald. This is a typical uh, contract with IBM and the Third Reich, which was instituted in, nine, in 1942. It's not with the Dutch subsidiary. It's not with the German subsidiary. It is with the IBM Corporation in New York. You know, as it happens, I know that story. I discussed it more than once with old Mr. Watson, and I was around at the time. I'm not saying that Watson didn't know that the German government used punch cards. He probably did know. After we had very few customers, Watson didn't want to do it. Watson, well, not because he thought it was immoral or not but because Watson with a very keen sense of public relations thought it was risky. It should not surprise us that corporate allegiance to profits will trump their allegiance to any flag. A recent U.S. Treasury Department report revealed that in one week alone, 57 U.S. corporations were fined for trading with official enemies of the United States, including terrorists, tyrants, and despotic regimes. Somewhere along a scale running all the way from democracy to despotism. This man makes it his job to study these things. Well, for one thing, avoid the comfortable idea that the mere form of government can of itself safeguard a nation against despotism.